The Sun newspaper looked into a case in 1891 that of a man that could be Jack the Ripper and with a relative in the police, to which a cover-up took place. His name was Thomas Cutbush. The Sun newspaper investigated Cutbush of a case in 1891 who attacked Florence Grace Johnson and attempted an assault on Isabella Fraser Anderson in Kennington, London. He was charged and sent to Her Majesty's pleasure and found to be insane. Cutbush's crimes was that of cutting the buttocks of women. He had lived with his mother and aunt in Albert Street, Kennington. His father had died when he was young and seems he grew up a spoilt child. He later became a clerk in the tea trade located in the East End. The story suggested he contracted syphilis in 1888. Then his life became that of a useless life after his brain had become affected and four people were trying to poison him. It was also said he studied medical books and rambled around at night, and on returning his clothes covered in mud, and he could not show evidence of what he did on the nights of the Ripper murders in 1888. The police did search Cutbush's room and found drawings of naked women, and mutilated. Also a knife was found the Sun reports. The Sun also suggests that Cutbush had an uncle in the police force, Charles Cutbush, and later committed suicide. The Sun claims Charles covered up the knowledge that Thomas Cutbush could have been the Ripper in 1888. The report was found under an confidential paper and six years later, McNaughton responds, as he did in the Ripper investigation. McNaughton writes, Cutbush may have been an outpatient but was treated for mental illness at Broadmoor Prison. Cutbush said he was set up by the police and family, and said he would fix his mother if he ever saw her. He attacked his mother and servant girl before his arrest. He was addicted to cures and read the Lancet medical paper. McNaughton said Cutbush had no relative in the police force. In recent years files on Cutbush from Broadmoor have been restored, after water damage, and gives a new light on Cutbush. It tells us he was a very violent person, his personality was extreme, violent to apathy, and a reward of a £500 reward for his capture after escaping prison. He had mercury poisoning on his face because he thought he had syphilis. A Dr. Brooks states he did not have syphilis. The question of the cover-up begins in modern research. A policeman on duty in the time of the Ripper crimes was aware of the descriptions that the killer looked like. He arrested Cutbush. His name was P.C. Race. With the arrest of Cutbush his surname rang bells in the police force as a senior policeman of some power, named Charles Cutbush, the uncle of Thomas. It seems the policeman who arrested Thomas went to the Sun newspaper and the investigation started as policeman Race claimed he arrested Jack the Ripper and was covered up. When the Sun investigation came to light, few years later, McNaughton wrote the suspect list and the comments on Thomas Cutbush. Cutbush first showed signs of illness in 1888, he had delusions and thought his doctor was poisoning him and was in and out of care for mental illness. 1890 women claimed to have been attacked with a knife, all were of a plump nature, Edwin Colcott was later arrested for these crimes. 1890 to 1891 the cutting incidents happened, so for a year, reports were filed of the crimes from various women. 1891 workhouse staff take Thomas Cutbush on the request of his family as he was showing signs of delusion. Cutbush escaped. He broke into a house and stole boots and items and was on the run. He headed to his home. His mother and aunt found a knife in his pocket, Cutbush attacked his mother and left to be on the run again, the knife was taken to the police and Cutbush was wanted by the police. This was when the stabbing of the two women was reported. Cutbush tried to go back home again but the police were waiting and arrested him. 
The attack soon connected Cut Bush to the past year of stabbings, even though Colcott was arrested for the crimes. March 1891. The testimonies, including Isabel Anderson, concluded that Cutbush was the person who attacked her with a knife. Cutbush was held at Holloway Prison and later sentenced and found insane to which he was taken to Broadmoor Prison for the Insane and to where he later died in 1903. He never claimed he was Jack the Ripper or was responsible for the knife attacks. Years later his uncle committed suicide by shooting himself in the head, his daughter witnessed the act and years later she herself ended up in an asylum. The modus operandi and the connection to the Ripper crimes. Cutbush obsession with syphilis. Knives and medical books would connect him to the Whitechapel murders at the time. But it seems he was not although his records as a mental patient would be on file at the time in 1888. His father died when young so he was brought up by his mother and aunt in a middle class surrounding and was spoilt. He had his own room and by 1888 had became ill with the obsession with syphilis to which we can assume he used prostitutes. His mother and aunt called authorities a number of times so Cutbush in his condition could think women as a threat. A state of paranoid delusion it seems. His mother and aunt knew he went out in the evenings but said it was to post letters, he stayed in his room most of the time and did not really know what he was up to. He claims to be a medical man and had knives in his room and consisted of medical books with the bloody, muddy garments up his chimney. He had been an outpatient since 1888. There is the decline of his mental state to 1890. He should have been a suspect of the Ripper crimes in 1888. The cover-up. PC Race had arrested Cutbush claiming suspicion of the recent knife crimes and suspicion of being the Ripper. It seems the police did nothing and PC Race went the Sun newspaper stating it was a cover-up because Thomas Cutbush had a relative in the police force. It was only when the newspaper investigation came to light that McNaughton responds by giving a weak suspect list and states Cutbush did not have an uncle in the force, which is not true. It is fact that seems suspicious. The uncle had a high position in the force and McNaughton would have known him. A known person who had images of women mutilated in his bedroom with knives and other strong evidence that PC Race found and to which the police never looked into his crimes in 1888 or in 1890 is strange. Modern research puts a good case that Cutbush could have been the Ripper.